Richard, your book is the story of your journey with Joan from her cancer diagnosis to her death. What's your overriding memory of that intense nine months? Well, that's one of the reasons that I kept such a forensically detailed diary, because I thought if once we were told she had 12 to 18 months and then it turned out to only be eight, eight months, I wanted to have as detailed a record of our, uh, of our time together because we, were, we met in 1983, we essentially began a conversation in bed in January 1983, and it ended in bed on the 2nd of September 2021. So we never stopped talking and never stopped sleeping with each other in the same bed. So it was a way of, of recording all of that. So let's talk a little bit more about that advice, the pocket full of happiness. Mm -hmm. Have you done that every day since she died? I have, because, you know, I'm, I spent my whole life like the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland chasing my tail thing. Well, I'm, I'm now going to work on the Gold Coast. Now I'm meeting you and doing all this stuff. And so it's forced me and my daughter to just take stock on a daily basis of what, you know, the good, the good things that there are, even if it's just something simple like the plane took off on time or the weather was beautiful in Melbourne or... Yeah, well, all today, those things. have you found a pocket full of happiness today? They're all laughing about Melbourne weather. <laughs> it was sunny it's yesterday. A bit of a thing. <laughs> okay, it wasn't today. <laughs> so this this notion of, of finding that every day or giving yourself permission to be happy even though you're grief stricken, yeah, has that has that changed your life in any noticeable way? Yeah, because I think that it means that you I, you, I don't take anything for granted anymore in the way that I might have done before, and even though. Uh, she's no longer physically with me, um, I still have this ongoing conversation in my head because I know that, you know, it's all the steering wheel stuff that when you get home and, and says, so uh, what was Fran like and what was she wearing and how old was she and what she smelled like, all that stuff. I don't walk around like somebody in an airport on a mobile phone and go, oh, what she was wearing, pink, she looked like, blah, it's, it's a silent conversation that goes on. It's only just over a year since she died, which is mm -hmm. not very long. Did the writing it down in the book, did it, has it helped you process that, that grief in yeah. that time? Yeah, because the, the, the weird thing about grief is that anybody who suffered in this room, or you, is that two months after the, um, she had died, people stopped talking about her. And I've, you know, people have to get on with their own lives, and I understand that. But when I have a conversation with somebody that knew her, and no mention of her name is, it's as though she's almost been cancelled, or she, she never existed. So, and I suppose it's out of that people feel, you know, they want to be respectful towards you and that hope that you're not going to fall apart in sort of wobbling jelly on the side of the street. So in talking about the person that has died, you want to because it keeps them alive.